Okay, let's take a look up the top here. We might be able to just use our warp tool for that one. We were playing with that earlier with our rectangle. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's get our rectangle tool. And we might actually want a rounded rectangle because of the edges here. And again, I'm going to work with a stroke with no fill at this point. And I'm going to create a shape to get started with. I'm going to go into my transform. I'm going to use warp. And now I'm going to see if I can't start with a shape instead of using my pen tool for the whole thing I can start with a shape and modify it hopefully instead of having to work with the pen tool all the way around I tell my students all the time if when they're looking at something if they can break it down into shapes it's usually a lot easier to work from a shape and modify the shape than it is to draw the whole thing with the pen tool. Of course it's depending on your proficiency with the pen tool. Let me go ahead and apply that. Here we can see we've got a pretty good shape going here of what the original looks like. So if I hide that and turn it back on you can see that actually works. So I could select again with my rounded rectangle tool. I could come in here. I can now change the color of my stroke. We use the same color as the windows and I might want to bring that down just a little bit because it is a guardrail so it is still kind of thick but one point seems a little too thick and you can start to see where it starts to look pretty good. Now we could come back in with the convert point tool and what's neat about this is we could come in and we could modify points on a shape. Say if you needed to convert a straight line to a curved line and want to adjust the handles or if you want to make a corner point with one of the handles. To further refine these points, I'll show you how to use the direct selection tool a little bit later. So we can come around here and we can keep adding and modify that shape. Now obviously, let me click off of that, these straight lines can be created with line segments. So let me stay at the top here with my rounded rectangle. Let me make a new layer and now with my line tool. I can just draw straight lines for each of those bars. And you'll see every time we draw a line, we're actually creating a new layer. And again, this is something you'd probably either merge all into one layer when you're completed, or you could group them. as we did the windows. So just by clicking and dragging we can create these bars. And you can see I'm skipping some of the bars. Again I just want to give the illusion. You don't have to do every single one of them if you don't want to but obviously you could. And let me go ahead and create a new folder or a new group. Let me name that bars and I'm going to click on all these shapes. I'm going to select all those at the same time. I'm going to go all the way down to the round rectangle. I just did a click, shift, click. I'm going to move those into the grouping for bars. And now with all the bars still selected here in our grouping, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the color of my bars to make them a little lighter. And I'm going to collapse that and I'm going to bring the bars below the rounded rectangle. So now they're behind the bar that we created earlier. So let's rename rounded rectangle. I'm going to name it rail. And then we've got the bars that go with the rail. And again, let me go down to my background layer. We can hide our lighthouse and we can see what kind of job we're doing. And with that turned off, I could come back up to my rail and then I can make adjustments to the various anchor points that have been created. Again, I can use my pen tool to work on this or I can actually come down to my path selection tool or my direct selection tool and I can modify these various points with my direct selection tool. If you've worked with Illustrator you're probably quite familiar with that where it lets you select individual anchor points that you can then click and drag to modify them or you could delete them. 
So that's looking a little better. Let me click off of that again so we can deselect it. And again, we can change the order of things. We could probably then put our, let's see, our shape one is our lighthouse. Let me go ahead and name that. Here's a good example is why naming your layers is so important. Let's do shape around windows. And what we could do then is bring our rail and our bars down below the lighthouse so that the edge of the rail is hidden partially by our lighthouse. Let me get my direct selection tool again and bring that up just a little bit so we can see the edge. There we go. And let me click on the background to deselect everything. So that's actually looking pretty good. We can turn our picture back on and then you can see we can continue up here. And let's go ahead and go, I'm gonna to go to my top of my stacking order. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna get my pen tool back again. And let's see about doing how we did the first one. My color is now gray, which is fine. I can see it just fine. I'm gonna do straight edges with my line segments. And then I'm gonna go back to my convert point tool. And I'm gonna click and drag on the anchor points you can see when the mouse changes to where you see the little angle tool, then you're actually on your anchor point and you can click and drag and create those handlebars to create your curves. So here we go. Whoops. There we go. Now it's not twisted. We can bring that up. Same thing over here. Bring it out. Get my handles make my adjustments, and then of course we're going to have to modify our stacking order to improve this. So now we want to go back to our pen tool with that selected, and let me go ahead and fill that and adjust my stroke. Let's make that a little thinner just so we see an edge. And you may eventually even want to turn those strokes off. And I believe we're going to need to bring this down behind our rail and bars. So I'm going to bring this down to the bottom of my stacking order. Sometimes when you're trying to reorder your layers, they don't cooperate, so you'll need to try moving a different layer to get the order you want. And let me go ahead and see. That's not too bad, especially since we're trying to design clip art. And now I see I do have to come in and adjust my rail. I'd have to bring that up to correct. Whoops. I have to go in with my direct selection tool on my rails layer to adjust this up to hide the tops of those line segments. There we go. And let's rename this. I'm just going to name this top of lighthouse. And then we could continue with the top here as well. And we can stay down here at the bottom, make a new layer get our pen tool, click, 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 just to create your line segments. And you may find hiding other layers while you're working might help you. But as long as we're working on separate layers, we should be okay. And I'm going to get my convert point tool. I'm going to click and hold. When I see my cursor change, I'm going to click and hold to create my handlebars that I can now adjust on either side of the anchor point to create my curves. And then I can click and drag and I can either keep a straight line on one side and create a curve on the other, or I can create a curve on both sides. Let's see. And that's not too bad. Okay. And that should be a thinner. So I'm going to go back up to my pen tool. I'm going to bring down the width of my line and that's closer to a yellow color it looks like and it's more of I guess wood let me go in here and get a darker yellow color and again I can go down to my background layer to deselect everything and hide things as I'm working and we can continue on 
to go ahead and finish that up. You can go in and add your rails and such. And of course, change the names of your layers so you know what you're working on.